In this video, I will show you how to get started with Jesse using Docker for local algo trading development. The image that I'll be using has all the dependencies installed, so you don't even need to install Python. I will also show you how to enable code intelligence in VS Code, which will make development so much easier. Let's get started. The installation process is pretty simple and straightforward. There's also a good chance that you already have Docker installed on your machine. To check if you do, open a terminal app and try running docker and docker compose. If you get errors like these ones saying the command is not found, then you need to install it. Let's begin with Windows. To download the docker desktop, go to docker.com slash get started and click on the download button. I already downloaded this before, so I'm going to cancel this. Once you have the setup file, go ahead and open it. There is not much to the setup process. Just make sure that at least the first option is checked. Press OK and give the installation process a few minutes to finish. Alright, now you should be able to use Docker. Go ahead and open the Docker desktop. And here you can see the status of Docker. In my case, it is running. Next, I'll cover macOS. I'll begin by googling download Docker. And the first result is what I want. Based on the CPU type that you are using, choose the right one for you. I'm on an M1 Mac, so I'll choose the right one. Once the download is done, go ahead and open the downloaded file and drag and drop the Docker icon into your applications folder. Give it about a minute to finish copying and then we should be good to go. Open Docker, choose Open. Next, it will ask for permissions. Click on OK and enter your password. Read the service agreement and choose Accept. The animation of the Docker icon means that it's still starting. Once that is done, you should be able to open the Docker desktop and it should say Docker desktop is running. Also, if you hover your mouse here, it should say Engine running. Now let's cover the Ubuntu distribution of Linux. Since I don't have a Linux machine at my hands right now, I created this VPS with Ubuntu installed on it. So I'm going to SSH into it. And starting now, whatever I enter will be inside a Linux machine. Since this is a fresh VPS, the first thing that I need to do is to update the repositories. To install Docker on Ubuntu, you could use their official install script. You can also find the commands for the script on Jesse's documentation website. There is one command for Docker and another for Docker Compose. Just copy and paste them into your terminal and you should be good to go. No matter which operating system you're using Docker on, what matters is that at the end of the installation process, you should be able to run both the Docker and Docker Compose commands without getting an error. Most likely at this point you already have a JS project, but just in case, I'll show you how to create a new one. On the documentation website, go to installation, create a new JS project, and copy and paste these commands into the directory that you want your project to live in. If you want, you can change the name mybot into anything that you like. Obviously, for cloning via git, you need to have git installed on your machine. If you don't, you can always go and copy the GitHub address, paste it into your browser, click on the green code button, and download the project as a zip file. I already have git installed on my machine, so now I will cd into my project. And lastly, I will create a .mv file by copying from the example file. And to make sure that the project files are present, I'll run ls. Jesse projects ship with Docker configuration files ready out of the box. Even the default values in the .mv file are set to work with Docker. For example, for Postgres host, it says if not using Docker, you probably want to set this to localhost. And the same goes for Redis host. So for now, I don't need to change anything in this file. To start Jesse with Docker, first cd into the Docker directory and run docker compose up. The first time that you run this command, Docker will pull the official image from Docker Hub and then start the containers. And the speed of this process depends on your internet connection. Once all the images are pulled, Docker will start the containers. The first time it needs to initiate the database, so just give it a good minute. And when it's done, you should see the URL of your Jesse dashboard. Go ahead, copy this URL and paste it into your browser. 
if you see the JC logo, it means it's working. But for some users, especially Windows users, this URL doesn't work. In such cases, replace the host name from for zeros into localhost. The password of the dashboard is set inside your projects.mv file. The default is set to test, but make sure to change it if you're on a production server. To make sure that everything works properly, let's import some candles. The Binance exchange is fine. Let's change the symbol into BTC USDT and change the sort date to January. And then click on sort. All right, everything looks good. The backtest section is where I can run backtest simulations. Here are the list of strategies, which currently there's just one example. To create my own, I will click on the three dots button and choose new strategy and name it my first strategy. To modify it, I need to open the project inside an editor. I use VS Code, which is open source and simple to use. To download it, go to their website and choose the one for your operating system. There are multiple ways for opening my project in VS Code. I usually use the terminal. So while keeping the terminal window that's running the containers, I will open another one and make sure that I am still inside the correct directory by running the ls command. Now I can run code dot. What this will do is to open the current directory in VS Code. The first time that you do this, it will ask you whether or not you trust the others of this project, and I do. You could also use the open folder option in VS Code's file menu for opening your project. The strategy that I just created is located at strategies, my first strategy, and init file. So this looks good and I can start writing code. Code Intelligence is a great feature in VS Code. It enables your editor to understand the code that you write. That means, first of all, it will catch any syntax errors you might make, and secondly, it will show you the code completion for what you write, which makes development so much faster. In the past, I used Docker for production and not for development. One of the main reasons was that features such as Code Intelligence were not available with this type of setup. However, recently VS Code added support for Docker containers using an extension called Remote Containers. As you can see here, right now VS Code is using the Python version of my local machine and not the one that's installed inside the Docker container. In your case, you might not even have Python installed on your machine at all. For example, let's try to add a new property method to my strategy using the EMA indicator. I name it short trend and I want it to tell me if the 21 EMA is above the 50. To get the 21 EMA, I will say EMA 21 equals and notice that I have already imported the indicators module as TA. So if I say TA dot, it should have shown me a list of the available indicators. And if I said E, it should have shown me the EMA. So let's go ahead and install the remote containers extension so that I can connect to my container directly. Before I install the extension, if you are on Windows or Linux, there are a few conditions that you need to make sure are in place before installing the extension. I'm on a Mac and I already installed Docker Desktop so I can continue. I'm gonna copy the name of the extension from here, open the extension section in VS Code and paste it into the search box. Click on the install button, give it a few seconds to finish and we're done. All right, let's close the extension tab. And notice that I'm still running Jesse's containers inside my terminal so you don't have to stop them before doing the next step. Inside VS Code, open the command palette and search for Remote Containers Attach. Choose the first one. And now you can see a list of the running containers on Docker. I have three, which all of them are related to Jesse. But the one that I want to open with VS Code that contains the Python and my project files is Jesse. The first time that you do this, it will take VS Code a few seconds to install some stuff. Once that is done, it will open a new VS Code window, so you can close the previous one if you like. Now that we're running inside the container, even the VS Code's built-in terminal is running commands inside the container. I know this because the root user that you see here is not what I have on my Mac terminal. And if I run the pwd command, you'll see that we are in the root directory which doesn't exist on my Mac. Now to open the project files, click on open folder, go back, choose the home directory, and click on OK. Now again, I will open my strategy located at strategies, my first strategy, 
and the init file. And now if I scroll down and try to write the same line again, I still don't get autocomplete. But this time the reason is different. Even though I have the Python IntelliSense plugin installed on my main VS Code, the version of VS Code that's running inside the container doesn't have it installed. So I need to install it one more time for this container. So I'll open the extensions section and search for Python. The first result is what I want. And notice that this time the install button says install in container. Click on it and give it a few seconds to finish. And now VS Code is telling me that I need to choose the Python interpreter. Notice that the Python version that's here is the one inside the container and not the one that was installed on my local machine. So now if I try to remove this line and write it again, I should get code completion. Not only I get code completion, it will also tell me the accepted parameters of the function, which is really useful. And also, if I make a syntax error, it should recognize it. I often release new versions of Jesse containing bug fixes, new features, and improvements. So it's important to regularly update your Jesse installation. With this setup, it's super easy. Let me show you. Open the terminal that's running the containers and press Ctrl and C to stop them. This is optional, but to make sure that they are not running, you could always run docker ps. This command prints out all the currently running containers, and I have none. To see a list of all the containers, even the ones that are stopped, add a hyphen a flag at the end of it. It says right here that the jesse container was stopped 31 seconds ago. To update your jesse image to the latest version, just run docker compose pull. In my case, there hasn't been any newer version, so it's not doing anything. But in your case, if there are newer versions, it will download it. So the next time that you run docker compose up, it will store the containers using the updated image. To see the Jesse version that you're running, open the about section and look for the Jesse version. If you want to know how to set up a remote dev environment in VS Code, check out this video. And if you want to use Docker for deploying your Jesse project for live trading on a server, then check out this one. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.